So after a 33 to 27 loss to the Saints that we don't even want to remember and a 27 uh, to 10 win over the Cardinals, which was really fun in the last two games, the Seahawks now face a quick turnaround for Thursday night football this week. Today, we welcome Damon Heward to Hawk Zone to sort it all out. Give me five. So Thanks for coming in. Thank you. Your good luck charm. Russell Wilson is so good that we like take him for granted. And then every now and then I just stop during a game and go, dude, you are so amazing. He really is. I mean, just his ability to extend the play when the whole thing breaks down. And you always have a chance to win every Sunday because Russell Wilson's your quarterback. I know. I do feel like, you know, no matter what happens, he's, yeah. he's there and this could happen. Yeah. Let's talk about Chris Carson, who I yeah. thought was kind of un fairly pilloried for the fumble in every game for three games. So random stuff happens, doesn't yeah, it, no, in it life? Does. And it yeah. doesn't mean that you won't have a terrific game the next time you go out. Right. And he was awesome yesterday. He was 104 awesome. yards rushing, I think, another 40 yards receiving. Um, he didn't fumble the football. No, he did not. And just a, just a battering ram. I mean, he runs with that power. And, and that's, yes. you know, kind of Marshawn Lynch-esque. And that's that's a Seahawk brand of football that we've grown to love here in the Northwest. And we do love it. And he did knock over about 15 people on one play that he had 10 or yeah. 12 yards on. And it was just really good to see. Yeah. Will Disley, who we've all loved as a Husky, yeah. it just seems to be coming into his own. He's better even than we thought he was going to be and we already thought he was going to be good. Yeah, you know, he came to the University of Washington as a defensive lineman and I think it was like uh, midway through his sophomore year that Jeff Choate, the D-line coach at the time, was like, you know, I think if you move over to that <laughs> offensive side of the ball, you can play this game for a long, long time. Wow. And that was a great decision because, yeah, he was a kind of a really good blocker at UW and we'd use him at times in the passing game, but just now you just see this guy coming into his own as a complete tight end. Uh, what, four touchdowns in the first four games. I think uh, a guy, uh, Gronk is the only other tight end in, in this uh, stage of his career to have wow. done that. So this guy's on track to be a Pro Bowl type player and it's so fun because he's such a great kid. That's what everybody says and you yeah. want nice people to do well and that's kind of a Seattle thing too which yeah. leads me to the next player I want to talk about which is having Luke Wilson back because yeah. Luke belongs in Seattle. Let's face <laughs> it. He just belongs here. Yeah he does. I mean he's everywhere in this town and and uh, just that great personality. He's got the hair back. Got the hair. Yeah, just a he stud. He needs to just leave the hair long. <laughs> I am convinced I agree. It, it's I part agree. of his power. Oh, yeah. uh, Bobby Wagner has yeah. like glue arms mm. that just fly out and, <laughs> and attack people and they can't get away. He had 11 tackles. How good yeah. was he yesterday? Unbelievable. I mean, just the nose for the football. But you're right, those long arms, that length that yeah. he has. It's just, um, I mean, he's he's the quarterback of that defense, and and uh, him and KJ, both those guys, veterans. Amazing. It just, um, it's unbelievable watching them run and play football. And Kendricks too yesterday. Yep. Um, let's talk about Jadavion Clowney, who had an amazing pick six. Mm -hmm. um, and later on in the game, I think I tweeted it. He was chasing the quarterback, and I thought, oh my God, I would just roll into a ball and play dead. He's yeah. just, he's fast, he's big, he's just fit in with this defense so well. Right. And what an impact he's had, and it's hard. I I moved to three different teams over the course of my NFL career and just to, to pop into a new town, uh, to learn a new system. He played in a 3-4, now a 4-3 whatever that might mean to you. No, I, I, I'm following you. <laughs> but anyway, um, and, and the impact he's having, you know, maybe you don't see him make every tackle or sack the quarterback every time, but just the push that this guy gets at six foot five, 270 pounds, just disrupting plays. And then yesterday it comes to fruition, sticking that paw out, oh, that interception, one hand. taking it to the house. One um, hand. I hope we can keep this guy around here for a long time. He loves a, it here. He yeah. looks so happy. You want to stay here. You don't want to go anywhere else. <laughs> else. So right. um, let's talk about the Rams on Thursday. They lost yeah. yesterday. Thank you. That helps yeah. with our division. Um, it's a short week for mm. both teams, but maybe a shorter week for the Rams. What's yeah. your thought about this game? Yeah, obviously this has kind of become our new rival here. It used to be the 49ers, yeah. uh, now the Rams and uh, Sean McVay and the program he has going down uh, down there in Los Angeles. Obviously a Super Bowl runner-up uh, a year ago. So this will be a tough competitive game. I love the fact that they played a really physical, tough 50, gave up 50 points against uh, Tampa Bay yesterday. So on a short week, coming to Seattle. Yeah. <laughs> I like our chances. <laughs> I like our chances, too. Yeah. We had a, a great game from Lockett yesterday, and I yeah. feel like he's filling. N nobody will ever take Doug Baldwin's place. Good Lord, he was so good. But Lockett has a lot of that same magic as well. Yeah, he does. Um, what was it? They, they tried 
all four times they targeted him yesterday, he comes down with a catch. Yeah. And that it's just unbelievable the connection him and Russ have, his playmaking ability, not only as a receiver, but as a punt returner. Uh, he's a dynamic football player, and, and he has. He's had to take that lead this year as the guy with Doug retiring, and he's done a great job. I would very much like him to come on New Day, so next time you see him, just tell him. You got just it. Just drop by on, on your day off. <laughs> um, so California, and they're ruling that they're going to move toward mm. pay, uh, paying college athletes. You've been one. Your son's about to be one. Uh, what's your thought about this? Yeah, boy, this is a tough one. Um, I'll say this. I know at the University of Washington, over the course of a student athlete's tenure there, four or five years, the school invests about $700,000 in that athlete's experience. Obviously, tuition. We spend almost $2 million a year in food alone for the football program. <laughs> okay. And out-of-state tuition at the University of Washington costs over $50,000 a year, and we have a lot of kids from California, as you know. So it, um, the only thing I'll say is, is I, I'm all for the student athletes and the players and making more money or having this sort of deal, but it has to be level across the board. It can't just be the state of California because of the recruiting advantage that those Can schools you would have. Yeah. So I think it's great what they're doing in that, you know, I mean, the only constant in life is things change, right? So many of these rules were written by the NCAA 50, 60, 70 years ago. Mm -hmm. There wasn't a lot of money in big time college football. Right. Now we're talking about a billion dollar industry, coaches making eight, nine million million dollars a year you know how do we get this right and um, if it's level across the playing board it could be a good thing but uh, this is a conversation that's not going to end anytime soon maybe it's a good thing that the conversation is starting at Agreed. least because I don't think I at all understand all the nuances of both sides but it yeah. would be good to talk about this great to talk about figure it. out you know what it is exactly that we uh, need to do talk to us about Jacob Eason and yeah. the Huskies yeah this is a uh, been an awesome month. They're four and one. Obviously, the tough setback versus the Golden Bears, but they've responded in a big way. Coming off a huge win against the Trojans uh, this weekend, 28 to 14. Um, Jacob Eason, man, this guy is a talent. Mm -hmm. uh, Husky fans need to appreciate him. Um, I hope he's here for another year. That's what I was going to ask. But, Do you think uh, it's just this year? Yeah, it might be. You know, might be the Corey Dillon kind of deal where you're just so talented that you move on to the next level. But, um, you know, he's been so good, so efficient, so accurate. And obviously some of these throws he's made. I mean, he's, he's got the strongest arm I've ever seen in Husky Stadium. So uh, it's been fun to watch him grow and this team get better and better each week now. And I and, uh, got a big one on the farm at Stanford this weekend. Right. But um, I love the fact the Cougs lost, the Golden Bears <laughs> lost, and the dogs, uh -oh. you know. Do we have any Cougs in the studio today? <laughs> Okay. Oh, yeah, the producer sorry. Heidi so, just said, well, heck no. My so. bad. My <laughs> bad. But uh, things are shaping up uh, in the Pac-12 North Division for the dogs and, and, and an Oregon game a couple weeks away now. It could be for all the marbles. We're going to look forward to it. Meantime, you're keeping busy with a number of things, including wine. Yeah. What, that, this was an excellent <laughs> career choice as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> tell, tell us what's happening with this. Yeah, this time of year it's harvest. Mm -hmm. And I got to tell you, it um, September's cooled off in a big way as we know around here mm -hmm. and so literally like all of our fruit is still hanging other than a little bit of merlot we picked about a week ago oh so gosh. it could mean, mean for an awesome harvest you know letting this fruit hang into october and it could make for some really interesting wines here like in 2019. you've learned a lot about this business over the time i have yeah it must be awful having to taste and taste and taste yeah it's really it's rough rigorous. You know, especially in the morning with the wheaties <laughs> You know, it's, it's, it's a tough biz, but uh, we're getting through it. Uh, thank you so much. Appreciate it. It's <laughs> Thanks, good to Margaret. see you. Great to see you, thank too. Thank you. And again, we don't have a long wait till the next game. Seahawks against the Rams on Thursday night. After the break, a beginner's guide to canning for fall. We're going to be making not wine, but apple pie jam. I am all in for this right after this break.